I've uh, recently watched another Sunday night movie, and it was Penny Points to Paradise. A um, bit of a uh, historical notable. Um, it was Peter Sellers' first film, Spike Milligan's first film, Harry Seacombe's first on-screen credit, and it was the first attempt to translate the comedy of The Goon Show into the realm of the screen. Um, now, obviously, if you've watched a few of these where I've talked about Peter Sellers, or if you've listened to the podcast, you'll know that I'm a huge Peter Sellers fan. I think he's my, he's my favourite actor. He's one of the greatest actors who ever lived. Also a terrible human being, but that's separate. Um, so it was interesting to see how it, how it started. He's very much a supporting player in the movie. The plot is relatively simple. Harry Flakers, played by Seacombe, has won the pools, and he and his mate Spike Donnelly are going on holiday to Brighton to stay in their usual boarding house, but to live it up a little more. And little do they know that there are various nefarious characters after Harry for his money, including a couple of characters played by Sellers. There's a Colonel character who's obviously very similar to uh, Colonel Bloodnock from The Goon Show. There's a fast-talking Canadian salesman who appears in one scene later on. And there's a couple of dames, of course, who are trying to seduce them. One of whom uh, is, I believe, the wife of the producer. Um, it's very slight. It's very short. I think it's, it's. I think it was an hour and eight minutes. Um, it has a musical number because all films had to have musical numbers at the time, and it incorporates elements of Seacombe's stage act. It has bits of where Sellers can extemporise in character as he regularly did on the radio at the time. So it's. It's a showcase for these actors. The weird part is that Spike Milligan doesn't get to do much goonish stuff. A lot of his role is actually played weirdly straight, and he didn't write the script because he, he wrote The Goon Show, uh, either on his own or collaborating with others. So it's a bit weird to see him a little bit more subdued and maybe playing a little bit more of a romantic lead. He's kind of the good-looking best friend to the, the more comic main character. Um, it ends up in a, a big chase. There's a, a counterfeiter who wants to swap uh, his counterfeit money for Flaker's real money. Uh, and it ends up with a big chase around a waxwork museum with various characters impersonating uh, waxwork exhibits as a way of escaping from everyone else. And eventually uh, the bad guy starts talking about his plan in front of what he thinks are two waxwork policemen, but are actually the real thing. And... <laughs> The final scene is of Harry and Spike uh, at their double wedding. And as they walk away, away from the church, we see that they, <laughs> their brides both have guns in their backs. <laughs> so they are literally being forced to marry these women at gunpoint. Um, it's very slight. It's very light and good-natured. It's, def it's a, a proper B picture. But it's fun. It's totally inoffensive. And it's really quite endearing. And it's fascinating to see this is where Sellers started. And even though he's, he's not the star of the film by any means, I think he's, he's definitely third build. He shouldn't be any higher than third build. But he does steal almost all the scenes he's in as these sort of fast-talking, scheming characters. And he plays two totally different characters in the movie. So it's, it's an interesting film. Uh, I look forward to watching the rest of this. This is available from BFI DVD. Uh, it includes... Let's Go Crazy, which is a, another half-hour short that they did shortly afterwards, and also The Slappiest Days of Our Lives, a hilariously titled compilation of silent comedy shorts, uh, revoiced and narrated by Sellers. So um, you'll be seeing reviews of those on here sooner or later. Um, but for the meantime, yeah, if you see this inexpensively, it's, uh, it's good fun. So um, look out for it.